हेलो स्टूडेंट आई एम डॉक्टर शशांक साहू सी एस डिपार्टमेंट अजय कुमार गरिंग कॉलेज इन दिस वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द टॉपिक एस टी एम एल फॉर्म एंड फ्रेम्स बेसिकली दिस टॉपिक इज फ्रॉम सब्जेक्ट के सी एस जीरो फाइव टू वेब डिजाइनिंग एंड दिस टॉपिक इज रिलेटेड टू यूनिट टू first we understand what is the html form if you want to collect the information from the user then we need to use the html form it is basically used to get the information from the user to write a html form in the program so first we have to write the form element then in action you will write the name of the url that will process your data and the way you are sending the information to the server so there are two methods to send the data to the server one is get second is post when you send the data with the help of get method data will not be secure it will be visible on the url and when you get the data by post data will be secure and it will not visible on the url within this form elements you can put other form elements to get the information from the user so one by one we will explain what are the form elements and how to include it so these are some of the form elements to get the input from the user we can use text input control to get the password from the user we can use password control if you need some more information from the user so we can use the text area if you want to display the check box and want the user will click on a check box then we can use check box button and radio button to get the information in a optional way either or any one of the option you can select it then we have a select box to give the multiple options to the user and the user will select one of the option we have upload a file with the help of file select box and some information you want to hide in the web page so that user is not able to see it that information you can give with the help of hidden control element and we have create we can create the button also in the html form and last we can have submit button and reset button these are some important elements that you need to include whenever you are getting the information from the user now one by one i explain some of the elements first of all to create any text box or any element of the form so important part is you write the input tag and there is a attribute of this input tag is type in the type you will write the element name that you want to display to the user by which you want to collect the information from the user so we have written type equal to text meaning is a text box will be created this is a text box will be created now here you can can write any information for example in name now suppose you want to take the password from the user then you can have type equal to just write the password again we create a text box here when the user will type the information will not display here it will display in the form of star because we have selected the password field so with the help of type equal to text we can create the text box and with the help of type equal to password we can create a text box that will receive password that it will not display to the user next is text area if you want some more information 
that is not within the size of the text box, then we can use the text area. In case of text area, a large text box will be created with number of rows and number of columns that you can define further. That is not going in detail uh, what the, how to create the number of rows and number of columns. The PPT is right now, uh, the lecture is to discuss about the basic things. So, when you write the text area, a text area by default number of rows and number of columns will be created. And here you can write the information. That is a larger information can be written in the text area. Now, we want to create a checkbox. So, write type equal to checkbox here. This is the checkbox. And checkbox can be click or it can be unchecked. With the help of type equal to radio, you can write the radio button also. So, a radio button will be created and there are multiple radio buttons are can be created with repeating this input tag and that depends upon you which information you want to select. You will select at a time 1. So, you can see just with the help of type property, we can include many elements in the form to get the information from the user. It is a very powerful element collecting the information. Next, select tag. With the help of select tag, you can display many options to the user and user will select one option or can select multiple options. Like it will display a drop box menu when you click here. So, here it will display maths, then it will display chemistry. These are the options are created and user can select any one op option. So, here you can see with the help of select tag, it is the starting of a drop down list. Then as the number of option you want to give it, you can give with the help of this option tag. So, this is the way to create a drop down list. Next, uh, if you want to upload a file to the server, then you can use input type equal to file. A box will be created, you can select a file and click on submit button, the file will be uploaded. Now, you want to hide some data that is not visible to the user and you want to use in the future and may be used for the server and maybe may be used for any applications. Then, you, then we can use input type equal to hidden and you can provide a value that can be processed further. So, here we can see type equal to file to upload a file and type equal to hidden to hide the information. Next, uh, if you want to create a button, a button will be created and you can click on this button. Just write type equal to button, a button will be created. You can do further programming on the button to process as per the user requirement. Now, two buttons are very important. One is submit button, second is reset button. In case when you type equal to submit, the data will be submitted to the server. I already discussed at the starting, here you can see, when we write here submit button, if there is a submit button and we click on this submit button, so all data in this element will go to this URL. This is the power of the submit button. Next is reset button. So, reset button is to clear the content of the element. Suppose in the text box you have written some a myth. In text area you have written AKGC and instead of deleting all the data, you just click on the reset button, all the data will be clear. 
So these two buttons are important. This is to submit the data to the server and this is to clear the data of the form elements. Next I am going to discuss some important attributes of input element. One of the important attribute is name. Now I have displayed the data to the user. User has submitted the information, has given the information in these elements. Next job is we need to process the element. So to process the element, we are able to access each element. So we have to use a name property. With the help of name property, we can give a name to a text box that we can use in the programming. Like here, type equal to text and I want to access this text box want to find the value of this text box, you can access this text box with the help of internal name is T1. So like in JavaScript, you will access this text box with the help of T1 and you can extract the information from the text box. So here T1 is the name of the text box that will be created in the HTML. Now other than the type and name attribute, in text field, there are many other attributes are available. One is value attribute. With the help of value attribute, we can initialize the value in the text box and we can extract the information of the text box that is given by the user. Then there is a size attribute. It is specify the width of the text. Then there is a max length attribute that is specify the maximum number of characters a user can enter. So other than the name, type and name, we have many other attributes that we can use depends upon the requirement of the user. Now there are attributes related to text area. I already discussed when we draw a text area, we can define the number of rows and number of columns. These are rows and we have columns. So to define the number of rows, we have the rows attribute. To define the columns, we have the column attributes. And name I already discussed, name is necessary to define that so that we can access the text area in the programming. Now this is an example, you can see the name of this text, text area is description. So you can just use the description in JavaScript or yeah, any other programming language to access this text area. Now here we can give number of rows are 5 and number of column is 7 for example and this text area will be displayed with the number of rows will be 5 and number of column will be 7. So with the help of this row and call attribute, we can define the size of the text area. We can define the size of the text area. Now in the checkbox and radio buttons, there are some attributes. One is type attribute. We have already seen the example of this type attribute. Then there is a name attribute. Name attribute is very necessary so that uh, we can access the element through with the help of programming. Then there is a value attribute when you select a particular checkbox, what the value will be given to the programming. And there is a checked attribute, you want to make a checkbox by default checked. Then you can give the checked attribute. Now these are some of the example of checkbox and radio buttons. You can see type equal to checkbox, there are two checkboxes are defined and the user will see maths and physics. So it will display like this way a checkbox is defined and the value maths will be written. Second checkbox is defined, the value physics is written. Now it is your choice, you can check maths or you can check the both maths and physics because it is a checkbox, you can select both. Now when you select a particular checkbox, so it will pass a value, it will pass a value on. 
here you can give any value that is given to the program for the processing purpose. Here in this example, the on is given, meaning is both math is on and physics is on. Now to access this checkbox internally in the programming, then we can use the name of this checkbox is maths and name of this checkbox is physics. Similarly, you can define the radio buttons. In the two radio buttons are created. Here radio button is maths and here the radio button is physics. Here you can see that the name of both the radio button is same. This is very important to group the radio buttons. If the name is not same, both the radio buttons will be selected. So, very important part is here, the name of radio button should be same for a particular group. For a subject, the name should be same. Like if you are writing male and female, then name should be same. In for some other area, if you are writing a group of radio buttons, that name should be same. If name is not same, then user will select any radio buttons. You want to select one option from a group of radio buttons. So, it will select only one option like maths or physics at a time. So, if it is select the maths, so internal value is maths, the programming will receive this value as a maths and it will process accordingly. If you select the physics, so internally it will receive the physics and it will process accordingly. Now, go with the select tag attribute. In the select tag, we have a name. So, size can be used to represent the scrolling list. And if you want to select more than one option, then we can use the multiple attribute. If it is set to multiple, then it allows a user to select multiple items from the drop down list. These are some attributes related to particular tags. Next, we have the attributes for the option. Option tag is the part of the select tag. So, in this we have a value. If you want to make a particular option selected, then you will write here selected. If you want to make a label, that is the alternate way of labeling the option, you can use the label attribute. Now, example of this uh, select option, so it is not showing properly. Okay, uh, let us see, we have the name, then uh, we have a option also, we have this option also and then we have the select. Uh, some problem is there, it is not showing properly. Okay, so I discuss about, I discuss about HTML forms. HTML form is a basic elements to receive the data from the user. In HTML form, we have an action property, when the click on the submit button, it will go to the URL that is mentioned in the action. And we can pass the data with the help of two methods, either the get and post. If you pass the data with the help of get method, the data will not secure, will display on the URL. And if you pass the data with the help of post method, the data will be secure and large data can be passed with the help of post method and data will not be visible on the URL and a small data can be passed with the help of get method, get method. So, we have two method get and post. Next, I am going to discuss about HTML frames. Now, first understand what is the HTML frame. HTML frame is basically used to divide the window in two parts or it can be used to divide the window in three parts or you can divide the window in row wise or you can divide the window second row in two parts. So, you want to divide the window, we are using the HTML frames. So, though two important tag, tags for HTML frame, one is frame set. So, frame set defined the number of division. 
either you going for the column wise division or going for the row wise division. So, this example is showing the column wise division and there are three division here. So, we have written calls here. The first division is 25 percent, second division is 50 percent and third division is 25 percent. Now, we have created three divisions here. You can see these are the three divisions. Next job is to write some text in this frame. So, we can say it is a frame 1, frame 2, frame 3. To write in this frame, we have to use the frame tag. So, frame set tag is used to divide the window either row wise and column wise. Then to display anything in a particular frame, we need to use the frame tag. And which file you want to display, that you have to write in the source attribute. That is file1.html, the content of file1.html will be displayed here, file1.html. Similarly, for frame 2, we will refer this second position file 2 dot stm will be display here and the third position will refer to the third division. So, here we will write file 3 dot stm. So, you can see with the help of frame set, we have three division and each division can be referred by the frame tag. Next example is displaying the data with the help of row wise. So, it will make the division like this way. It is a 25 percent, 50 percent and again we have a 25 percent. Now, we have a three parts and the first frame referring to the first division, second frame is referring to the second division and third frame is referring to the third frame. So, file 1 dot html will display here, stm, file 2 dot stm will display here and file 3 dot stm will display here. So, this is the way you can understand with the help of position, we can refer a particular frame of the window. Next, suppose a browser is not supporting to the frames, then you write the no frame tag and write the information to the user. This browser is not supporting to the frames and you can go ahead. Next, nested frame within the frame, we can divide further a frame set. That is called nesting of a frame set. So, first there is a division of row wise, two parts. So, we have here two parts are divided. It is of 50 percent, it is of 50 percent. Now, we are not interested to divide the first row. I want to display some data in the first row. So, we will use the frame tag here. Frame source file 1 dot html. So, file 1 dot stm will display here. Contained of file 1 dot stm will display here. I am talking about contained. Now, further we have used the frame set that is this will divide this area, second area in again two parts that is column wise 20 percent and 75 percent. So, this is the 25 percent and remaining is 75 percent. Now, there are two divisions. So, we have to write two frames here. First frame will refer this area. So, it will display file 2 dot stm 
second frame is related to this area, third area. So, it will display file 3 dot stm. So, you can see here how the nesting of frame set is possible. With the help of first frame set, you are dividing the whole web page. Then second frame set is further division of a particular row or column. You can further divide either row or column in uh, any number of parts. Next is you want to put the user that no resizing of a frame is possible. So, just write the property no resize equal to no resize. In that case, no resizing of frame is possible. So, this attribute is given and give the value. So, frame will not resize. Next is here we have given the division with the help of percentage. One of the option is available, no need to give with the help of percentage only. Here we can give in terms of pixels. So, columns is there and first division is 120 pixels and no need to define the further division, just put the star. So, obviously, the remaining parts will be further divided. So, there are two division, 120 pixels and second is remaining part. To denote the remaining part, just use the star only. Now, I want to display something in the first frame. So, we use the first frame here, frame, source property and links.html. So, this is the division column wise. This is 120 pixels and this is remaining star. It is a star. First file, for example, links.htm will display here links.htm. That meaning is the contain of links.htm will display here. And file 1.htm, file 1.htm will display here. Content of file 1.htm will display here. Now, one of the beauty of this program is that we have given the name to this frame. Name of this frame is show frame. So, you can refer this so frame further in the program if you want to display something. Now, an example of accessing the name that you have given to a particular frame, you can see there are three hyperlinks are given 1, 2, and 3. And we are displaying the hyperlink with the file name is f1.stm, f2.stm, and f file3.stm. I want to display this file in a particular frame. So, we need the name of the frame. Name of the frame is given name equal to so frame. And you can display with the help of target attribute. One of the attribute in anchor tag that is in hyperlink. Just give the name of the frame. Show frame. So, this file, file1.stm, content of this file1.stm will display in a particular frame, name of the frame is so frame and we have already defined the so frame here that is in this area. So, when we click on the file 1, contained of file 1 dot html will go to the frame where its name is show frame. Similarly, when we click on the file f file 2, so contained of file 2 will display in this frame because the name of this frame is So, frame it is name. Okay. Similarly, if you click on the file 3, then content of file 3 will go to the frame that is so frame. Next is in a particular file, if you want to jump to a particular chapter, then we can use this hash symbol. So, this frame set divided columns in two parts. This is 20 percent and this is 80 percent. In the first, we are displaying file 1 dot stm. Second, there is a file 2, but I want to move to chapter 10. 
So immediately it will move to the chapter 10 to display to the user. So this has symbol indicates that if you want to jump to a content of a particular file, whenever we are going to display the file, just use the hash symbol and give the name of the label. Label should be defined. So it will move to a particular label in a file 2.stm. Now uh, this is the syntax of frame set. So frame set can have calls also, frame set has can rows also. In the rows and columns we can give pixels that is division can be given with the help of pixels, division can be given with the help of percentage or it can be represented with the star values. Now column size in pixels like 100 pixels or you can write just 100 or you can write the percentage like in 50 percent, rest of the available space should be assigned as a column that is with the help of star. So in this uh, lecture I discuss about uh, HTML form which is a basic element to collect the information. Then I discuss about uh, HTML frames to divide the window into either row wise and column wise. Now in my next coming lecture I will uh, give some practical example of this HTML frame and uh, as well as HTML forms. Okay, thank you very much.